okay, I'm going to do my very best to make this kind of like class time. Um, so we start with our announcements. I know that we have a holiday on Tuesday, but I still wanted to have you get the opportunity to think through the concepts of buffers with me. So Sapling 31 and 32 is work with those buffers. That is not due until Sunday. The next topic is acid-base titrations. And in these problems, you are going to be thinking through the pH changes during the course of a titration between an acid and a base. We're going to be looking at it um, in, in light of both of them being strong or the acid being strong and the base weak or the base strong and the acid weak. So we'll be looking at that and then we'll finish off with indicators which help us identify the endpoints when we do titrations. In Chemistry 105, you did titration problems and we still expect you to be able to do those problems. They show up in your learning outcomes for this class. But a typical titration problem similar to what we did in 105, General Chemistry 1, was to give you the molarity and volume of maybe an acid and say, okay, if it titrated with this volume of a base, what would be the molarity of that base? So we had to go through stoichiometry to do those calculations. Here we're not going to be spending our time on that. We're going to be spending our time on calculating the pH. Now this is typically the most challenging topic for students okay it is just one topic of many and it's just one topic of many that are on your exam and so i don't want you to stress over it i want you to realize however that if you keep on pushing to understanding you'll get there and you can't fake your way through these problems you cannot memorize your way through these problems you either keep pushing to where it's like oh i get it and the light bulb comes on or the light bulb doesn't come on and you can't do the problems, okay? Just want you to realize that. So keep trying to push to understanding. And the biggest key is to be able to write the reactions at the beginning and know how to start the problem. Once you start them, it's not a big deal. But getting that, that beginning going is where the understanding comes from. Okay, so with that, we're going to start some problems. We're going to go through four problems. I'm going to kind of encourage you to stop and try and resume kind of like I do in class only in class I just don't say anything for a while and make you work on it here you've got to do the pausing because this is what I know about learning you learn by doing not by watching me do so when I encourage you to pause and do something I suggest you pause and do something then come back and see how you did and that way if you did it right great you thought through it you figured it out if you do it wrong, it's okay. We're learning. So you look at what I did versus what you did and you pause and you make a mental note of it. You think about, well, why did she do that? Why did I do this? And let me make sure I do it correctly in the future. Okay, so when I encourage you to pause, please do because it will help you in the long run. All right, so we have a problem where we're going to calculate the pH of a buffer. So I want you to pause and I want you to find the equation needed in order to find the pH of a buffer. Okay, did you find the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation? pH is equal to pKa plus the log of the concentration of the base over the concentration of an acid. Now this last term here could also be, if it's more convenient, the moles of the base over the moles of the acid. Okay, it just depends on which is more convenient. The reason this is just as good for that last term is they're both in the same solution. So they both have the same volume. So you're canceling the volumes out um, in the numerator and the denominator. Okay, so we have an equation. Now, just so you know, we could have left out the word buffer and we'd have to recognize that it's a buffer. So it could have been worded, worded this way. Calculate the pH of a solution that contains these things. Well, when I read through and see that it's a solution that contains these things, I would have to recognize that I have a weak acid and I have its conjugate base salt. And that tells me, hey, I've got a buffer. And that would prompt for me that I need to calculate the pH using the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. So now I want you to stop and I want you to calculate the pH of this solution. 
Well, if you got a pH of 3.99, you're in great shape and you can skip my discussion here. Just go ahead until the next slide pops up. If you didn't get that, let's find our mistake. pH is the pKa, which is the negative log of the Ka of 3.5 times 10 to the minus 4. If a mistake was going to be made, it is probably in this portion here of making sure you put things in the right place. You've got to find the acid, it goes in the bottom, and the base, it goes in the top. Now, the acid is, you know, if it's an acid buffer, it's pretty easy to find. Acids have H's at the front, so that's the tell. But that tells us the name, and it tells it's an acid. That's another tell, <laughs> a big one. And then they gave me a Ka for it. That's also a tell. So we know that this is the acid, and the concentration of the acid is 0 0.150. So that is what I'm going to put here. The concentration of the base, well, this is its conjugate base. This is the concentration of this conjugate base salt right here. And there's one CNO in the salt, so that is also the concentration of the salt. So that is going to be 3.77 plus 0.22. Now in terms of the answer, which is 3.99, um, we think about whether that makes sense. This concentrate, I mean this pH here, is what the pH would be if there were equal amounts of these two things. If these two numbers were the same, because that would be the log of one, and the log of one is equal to zero. So this is what the pH would be if we had equal amounts of both. I see up here that I have more base than I have acid, so I would expect it to be a little bit higher, and that's indeed what it is. Okay, let's work on our next problem. Here we have a problem where it is a buffer, okay? Tells us the word buffer, that's always a good thing. It's the same components, okay? We have this same acid as the previous problem and here's its conjugate base and we're trying to find the ratio of those. Think about your Henderson-Hasselbalch equation for a moment and say where in that equation, what do I need to solve for? Well, what you need to solve for pH is equal to pKa plus the log of the base over the acid. The base over the acid is the CNO minus over the HCNO. So we're going to solve for this ratio, okay? This portion right here of our buffer. So see if you can, and remember you have to go back to the previous problem and your pKa value that you were given for that. Um, in order to solve it, work it and see what you come up with for your ratio. Well, if you came up with this ratio equal to 1.35, you did it correctly. Let's think about what that means for just a minute, and then if you didn't get that answer, I will do the work and the others can skip ahead. What this means is, if the concentration of CNO minus was equal to 1.35, and the concentration of HCNO was equal to 1.00, you would have a solution that has a pH of 3.90. Now it doesn't have to be fully those numbers, but that, that ratio does give you 1.35. You could also have a CNO minus concentration of, oh, let's say 0 0.135, and a concentration of the acid being 0 0.100, and that would have a pH of 3.90. Any concentration of these two things, where when you divide them gives you 1.35, will give you a concentrate, I mean a pH of 3.90. Now, if I'm going to compare these two buffers, this one and this one, I could talk about which one has the greater buffering capacity. and that would be this top one because there's more acid and there's more base than this one. This would have a lesser buffering, I'll call it BC for buffering capacity because there's just not as much and it would get consumed more rapidly. But that ratio of base to acid just has to be 1.35 in order to give us that pH. So if you didn't get that answer, let's put the numbers in. We And the rest of you can skip ahead to the next problem. We put a pH of 3.90 here. 
a pKa, well we had that in the previous problem. It was the negative log of the Ka and that was 3.77 plus the log of the CNO minus concentration over the HCNO. I'll subtract 3.77 from both sides and that is going to give me 0 0.13 is equal to the log of CNO minus over HCNO. Now how do I get the log over there? Where well, I take 10 to both sides. Not 10 to the minus, this is not on a, a p function, this is just getting rid of the log. Raising it to the 10 power and 10 to the minus 0.13 is where we get the value of um, 1.35 is going to be the CNO minus over the HCNO concentration. Okay. All right, let's go to our next one. Okay, now we're ready to do the part where we take either an acid or a base, and we're going to do one of each, and place it into the buffer and let the buffer neutralize that strong acid or strong base and see what the pH of the new solution would be. Now we're putting this into that original buffer, all right? The original one that we saw on the first slide. It was a 0 0.150 molar solution of H, what was it, H, CNO and it was a 0 0.250 molar solution of KCNO. All right, that's our original buffer of this problem. And we're taking 100 milliliters of that buffer and we are going to neutralize it. Now, buffers exist in such a way that they contain both an acid. HCNO and its conjugate base CNO minus so that both are there to neutralize it. The first thing I want you to pause and think about is which component of the buffer is going to neutralize that strong acid. Well hope you said that it was the CNO minus there. This part, this is the base of my buffer. This is the guy that's going to neutralize it. So now I want you to stop and I want you to try to write a reaction looking at your notes and how I modeled it. Write a reaction to neutralize the HCl with that CNO minus. Now I told you when you write this reaction, if you're following my lead, to write the strong acid as H3O plus. I always do that. And I tell you why I do that, why it works. So if you're not sure of the why, it's much better if you understand it. So you ought to pause and go back and say, why did she do that? Okay, but strong acids, I use that to represent it. And it's going to be reacting with the CNO minus, and that is going to give me a proton swap of HCNO plus H2O. Now skip ahead a little bit if you need to and start working on the next table under there. Um, and you can then advance the slide. But for those of you who need a little more talking through about this reaction, this is, you need to stay and listen, okay? This is the foundation of being able to do a buffer problem, being able to write this reaction. So I wrote this as the strong acid. I found the base of the buffer. I didn't memorize products. It is a proton swap. I take the H plus off of the acid and I put it onto the base. When I put it onto here, it created HCNO. When I took it off of here, it created water. I will go ahead and put AQs next to everything that should be an AQ as it's dissolved in water and I'll put an L after this. All right, so when we have a one-way reaction, and this is one way because strong acids push it to completion, I don't do an ICE table, I do an ICF table. I don't put in molarity, I put in moles because this is a way of doing a limiting reactant problem. So now I want you to pause and I want you to find the moles to plug in to your table. Okay, I hope you put in 0 0.00025 here, 0 0.025 here, 0 0.0150 here. If you did, great. If you didn't, uh, and advance ahead. If you didn't, 
Watch how I came up with those numbers. The moles of H3O plus are coming from the moles of HCl. So I take the molarity of HCl, which was 0 0.050 moles per liter, times the volume in liters, 0 0.0050 liters. And that is what gave me the 0 0.00025 moles. And I put that in my table. The next thing is moles of CNO. The moles of CNO minus is equivalent to the moles of the salt that was placed in that solution. I take the molarity, 0.250 moles per liter, and I multiply by the volume. They tell me that they had 100 milliliters of solution. So I'm going to multiply by 0.1 liter. You don't divide it in half saying, well, half of it's this guy and half of it's that guy. No, they're both in a one liter solution. So this gives me 0 0.0250 liters for the CNO minus. And the moles of HCNO, there is already some present there. It is going to be the molarity, moles per liter of the HCNO times that same volume of one liter, which, or 0.1 liter, the 100 milliliters, and that gives me 0 0.0150. Okay, so we have that. Now, once again, pause and fill in this table, remembering that you use up the smallest one. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and do it because I need to. So you rejoined me. We're going to use up the smallest, which is the 0 0.00025, and we're going to produce on the product side. Okay, and when you subtract, you have consumed all of the H3O+. Plus. Okay, and you have consumed some, a little bit of this, 0 0.002475. You've produced a little bit of this, 0 0.01525. Now I'm going to go ahead and carry these extra significant figures. It looks like they didn't change at all, but I will carry it throughout in order to do the problem. My table is filled in. Pause and think about what you do next. We're trying to calculate the pH of this solution. Well, this pH is still a buffer, so the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation still applies. pH is equal to pKa, which was 3.77. We know that from the previous problems we've worked. pH equals pKa plus the log, and we can use moles. We don't have to use molarity. Number of moles of the base over the number of moles of the acid. 0, 0, 0,002475 is my base. 0 0.01525 is my acid, and I get a value of 3.98. I stop and think about that answer. The buffer originally, if you go back and look, pause and do that. Go back and look at your original buffer. It was 3.99. This dropped ever so slightly. Should it have dropped if it's gonna change at all? Sure, we're adding an acid and acids lower pH. So it dropped by 0.01 pH units a tiny bit, um, but it definitely resisted change. There wasn't much change at all by adding that strong acid. All right, so the next problem is this one. What quantity of, we're gonna add a quantity of KOH, a strong base. Now, you all may stop right now and see if you can do this problem. Okay, and then rejoin me. And then you can rejoin me at any point along the way where you get stuck. I would love to see you go and see how you did, see if you got the answer, and then work and stop and work hearing my prompts if you need to. Okay, if you worked it, great. You should have gotten a pH of 4.00. If you got a pH of 4.00, you did it correctly most likely, okay? It raised it ever so slightly. Um, if you didn't, what do we do? The first thing we do is write the reaction. Now, just like I told you to use H3O plus for strong acids, just write OH minus for strong bases. Don't put that potassium in there. That spectator ion will get in your way. Then find the acid component of your buffer and write it because it's the acid that neutralizes bases. 
The strong base pushes it to completion. We do the proton swap. We get CNO minus and we have H2O. Go ahead and put the AQs in and the L in just to be good form. One way at reactions. What kind of table does that make? Figure that out and fill it out. Rejoin me when you have it done. As I do this table, I have to plug in everything I had from before. Now we're going to go back to the original buffer. We're not adding this to the buffer that we added the acid to. We're adding it to the original buffer. And in that original buffer, we had 0 0.0150 moles of this. We had 0 0.025 moles of this. Don't care about the water. And we need the moles of the hydroxide. It's the same volume and molarity, but we'll go ahead and work that out down here. It was 0 0.050 moles of KOH, which is the same number of moles of OH since it's a strong base, moles per liter times my liters, and that gives me zero, that's an L, 0 0.00025 moles. So I put that in, 0 0.00025. We consume the smallest, and you go ahead and pause and work this problem if you want to. Let's consume 0, 0, 0, 0.00025, produce 0 0.00025. I have consumed all the base. That's what a buffer is supposed to do. I have used up a little bit of this acid, 0 0.01475. I have produced a little bit of this base, 2525. All right, now how do you finish this problem? Think about it and finish it. Did you get 4.00? Great. If you didn't, let's do the henderson hasselbach equation together. pH is equal to pKa plus the log of, and we're going to use moles because you can. All right, that's what's in my table. I put moles into my table. So pKa was 3.77 plus the log of the number of moles of base, that's the 0 0.002525, over the moles of the acid, which was 0 0.01475. And that will give you a value of 4.00. It went up ever so slightly over the original buffer of 3.99. Should going up be the way it should go? Yes, we're adding a base, and bases increase. Okay, so before you leave me, let's just think about these problems one last time of what's happening. You're either going to add an acid or you're going to add a base to your buffer. You have to decide who neutralizes that thing. If you add an acid, it's the base of the buffer that will neutralize it. If you add a base, it's the acid of the buffer that will neutralize it. And you write the reaction between those two things. When you do it, don't forget that you not only have reactants in there, but it's a buffer. So there's already some of that product present. Okay, so don't put a zero here. And then fill in the table. Unless you have blown past the buffering capacity of this, then it will have some of the conjugates present, and that is still a buffer, and you can use the henderson hasselbach equation. All right? Hopefully, that will give you guidance to take off and start working on your sapling, and let me know how I can help you, both by posting in Piazza and by coming to class next time. All right, on Wednesday or Thursday, depending upon when you are a student, and asking questions about this if you have them.